Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm joined by my friend Anthony to discuss a film that is divisive, to say the very least. Movies, movies. How do we say that? Do movie, you know? I think. Movie? I think it's movie. Movies, The Substance, starring Demi Moore. But first, before we get started, introduce yourself and let everybody know where they can find your work. Thanks for having me, number one. Uh, Anthony Francis, I am the senior film critic for the moviereview.com and screencomment.com. And I also do the occasional review for uh, filmthread.com. And you can find all my work at all three of those places and on Instagram at themoviereview.com. Awesome. So I asked Anthony to join me because we saw this movie together and we had very different of uh, reactions to, to it. <laughs> so I thought it would be good to have differing opinions presented today. That's great. That's yeah. So I want to start off by saying I didn't go into this thinking I was going to hate it as much as I do. I really actually was excited for it based on the message it was supposed to be getting across. And yeah. I was very disappointed and I, it took me a while to actually really think about what I thought about it because I don't think I've ever left a movie theater. Just like, I don't want to talk to anyone about anything. I like, I wrote in silence home because I was just like, I had to decompress. I got that vibe a little bit, even though the three of us, another critic were uh, gabbing about it, but I got that vibe. You're like, yeah, we'll talk later. <laughs> So I don't want to come across that I was a hater because it's not what my intention was. But yeah, I just, I didn't love it. So for those who don't know, The Substance follows a former Hollywood star played by Demi Moore, who is being outed at her job because she, God forbid, turned 50. And she's not young and she's not hot, apparently. I mean, Demi Moore is really pretty. So it's one of those, okay. Right. Sure. <laughs> so beauty is in the eye. Yes, that is true. So she's outed for someone younger and hotter. And instead of, I don't know, taking a breather, taking a vacation, she decides to inject herself with the substance that creates a duplicate ish of her younger. And yeah, things go awry very quickly. <laughs> Very quickly. Very quickly. So I would love to hear what your overall thoughts were to start. Well, um, I really, <laughs> I, this is going to be a fun one. Um, it's more fun when everybody's not on the exact same page. Uh, I really loved it. But <laughs> there's, there's a caveat with this one. Um, I really love the film. And it really makes its point hardcore strong and then keeps making its point and then continues and continues. And then there were moments, there were moments, and I know you are with me on this one, where, okay, we get it, where, and I say this in my review, it bordered on being the exploitation that it was, you know, given the business to, if you will. Um, it uh no I think I thought it was a fascinating film. I have no problem. It's it wasn't that long. It's only 220. For me that's not a long movie, but <laughs> I don't care how long a movie is. One of my favorite films is Bertolucci's 1900. Forgive the pretentiousness and the full <laughs> cut is 5 hours and 35 minutes. I've seen it like 8 times, <laughs> twice in the theater. I love it. My point, if a movie is has something to say, and you can say it in your runtime, then do it without being repetitive. I will say that while I love this film, this film gets repetitive. And, but I liked it. Can I talk about Dennis Quaid very quickly? Because there's uh, so much to talk about. I'm just going to bounce <laughs> all over the place. Go ahead. Um, Quaid, I've always enjoyed him as an actor. Uh, I don't really want to hang with the guy, but. Uh, he I thought he was when he first came on, I thought, oh, this isn't gonna work at all. But then he kind of worked for me with his over the top gross 
<laughs> close-ups of him sucking shrimp and uh. greasy fingers. And he's a greasy, slimy guy. And I think that point was made. Not overdone, really. Mm, I don't know. But uh, I, I like I like that his name was Harvey. And I like that, uh, you know, he, of course, yay, well, you're basically not pretty enough. We need a new new model, you know, and here's a goodbye present. You know, he didn't care. And he just wants someone for him and his audience to to ogle. And um, that's all it was. It's not about who's the best host and who can do it. Um, I liked all that. I liked the message it was sending. There's about six different messages hmm. Six different factions of one message, you know, um, just the the phrase age out because Demi Moore's character ages out is offensive in itself. And I think speaks to the point of the movie. Um, it, it I mean, jump in here anytime because I can <laughs> I could wax poetic with a few speed bumps along the way or potholes, I should say. <laughs> I, 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 I was OK. You want me to jump in? I'll jump in. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yes, I know. So I want to say that what shocked me, because I know when we were talking that night after the movie, mm -hmm. I think we all thought the director was a guy and the director is a woman. And when I learned I that, it made it even in more insane to me that that was the final product. Yeah. Because for a film that was supposed to be about, you know, like the burden society places on women. How we're not allowed to age, like God forbid we age at all, yeah. um, because then we're not hot, uh, and then we have no usefulness to anyone. Literally, I felt like the camera work, <laughs> just all of it. It felt like it was for a male gaze, and out of everybody I've spoken to, and I'm not saying that guys who like this movie are creeps, but like it definitely seemed to resonate more with men than the women which is ironic considering it's supposed to be about women's issues agreed and uh i i have said in print and in public uh it's a uh, body horror feminist treatise and i say that in the positive um with a little dark comedy if you can find it or if you're open <laughs> to it, what I do. um look i i think in my opinion as you know a, a guy <laughs> I, <laughs> no in my opinion look i'm a film critic and a cinephile and whatever you want to call me um it it i think it plays more to the guys on the body horror issue i'm not saying guys aren't like hey i like that camera angle you know uh i'm just saying i think body horror i know a lot of female horror fans and i would say a lesser percentage of them are digging body horror than the guys and and i don't know i've done no research uh <laughs> just from the people i know um that's my opinion of and maybe and maybe i mean there is something to did you see the substance lots of blood yeah but wait there's you know <laughs> of course i'm not coming from that angle but uh, i'm not going to disagree that there are going to be viewers who who do that. And I think that's a problem. When I found out the director was a female, she did a really good uh, feminist revenge thriller uh, called uh, Revenge from 2017. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's not as in your face as this one. Um, and the women triumph over. And, and No, it's a really good film. But I think it does present a problem the way she shoots things. I got it after 10 minutes. Yeah. I got it after 20 minutes <laughs> at the hour mark. Yeah, I, I get it. You yeah, know? It, it did feel like she was almost, I don't want to say hammering because of the type of content that's in the film, but it did really feel like it was just being like, we were being bludgeoned to death Yeah, with like, and that's why I said, I think it, it started to shift into the thing it was preaching against. And then it, to me, it felt more like it was objectifying all of its subjects versus like showing that objectification is wrong. Right. Um, I agree with that statement, but, but I, I, I'm putting this question out there cause I have no answer <laughs> as a female filmmaker. 
do you think she just wasn't realizing that she crossed the line into objectification and exploitation or do you well, think he was saying i mean and this has i've heard filmmakers talk about this man i i I didn't get that sold until the promise of nudity or a sex scene or, you know, or did she go that way? Like, okay, I made my point. Maybe if I do more, I can sell this thing. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think the cinematographer was a guy though. So definitely. And maybe it's harder to see when you're close up versus like being able to pull back and see the big picture. Like we're watching the big picture on the screen Maybe. and maybe it came across <laughs> differently to her but i mean i've seen women revenge thrillers yeah. and stuff and it just yeah, i know and it wasn't in the body horror aspect of it i've never been bothered by body horror and honestly it wasn't the body horror that was the problem it was all the oh, other no. stuff you said i love this you said that night you were like they could have set it in five done it in five shots and they did it in 105 <laughs> and that's what it was i think the runtime was a little bloated and maybe if they had cut down some of that, cause we did get it. We got it. We got the, we know what's going on. We get right. it. Sue is young. She's hot. Harvey is ogling her, but like, so is the camera. And so then it's like, <laughs> it's just, and, and I get the whole, the director was going for the whole male gaze. Um, I get it. And again, I got it at 20 minutes. I got it at 45 <laughs> minutes. I got it in an hour. Um, but the cinematographer shoots Sue in like a uh, a really just sexualized, um, not even a person, just a sexual objectification, uh, purposely, mind you, at least for a while. Uh, and and I understand that, and I and on the theme, I like that because when once Sue is out. She's shot very angelic, very sexual, almost perfection. And Demi Moore becomes reclusive and the art direction and the cinematography capture her in dark shaded rooms and basically the bathroom. Demi Moore spends a good deal of the, the film in the bathroom. Um, uh, I think that getting back to the symbolism the, and this is not a spoiler, um, the whole tearing your body open to make something new of it and then having to sew it and, you know, adapt to the growing or whatever uh, new skin face. I think that was a good, uh, sp I think that did well speaking to how don't let society mostly Hollywood and the city of angels tell you that you're not pretty. Are you happy with yourself? Are you happy with it? Don't destroy your face to make them happy. You know, do you to make you happy. I understand nips and tucks and, you know, but uh, I never understood plastic surgery. I mean, I understand why, but it, it hurts more than it helps, I think. And I think the movie got that point home very well through the body horror that a lot of people might not pick up. I'm not saying I'm, you know, a genius philosopher uh, critic, but, <laughs> but those moments are so, and I say this in the positive, just utterly bizarre and in your face and just splattered with gore and <laughs> weirdness that uh, the point might, and I'm not knocking the film, but to for some, the point might be missed on that. Yeah, I think there were several points, especially towards the end where I was like, okay, this is the end. Okay, no, this is the end. Oh, no, 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 this is the end. And then it just kept going. And I will say, I thought I really liked outside of the objectifying camera work. I actually yeah. enjoyed the rest of the cinematography of the film. I thought the way they filmed Harvey with the fish eye just really brought out the grossness of him. Like you said, Demi starts out super light and then she gets put into the dark as Sue gets to take on the light and the sound work too, I thought was oh, the sound is phenomenal. Herb. Like it just, it was so good. And it puts you right into all that, that like you could just hear it and feel it. It was very Squish. visceral. Yeah. Yeah. The squishing and the, the squelching. <laughs> it was just very, 
it was very real. Um, so I really, I enjoyed that. And I actually enjoyed Demi's performance because Scott, I don't think she's been in anything that I have seen anyway in a long time. I would argue that it's the performance of her career. She's given, I was never a Demi Moore hater, but she was never the best chooser of scripts for many years. Um, but And she's given many good performances. I thought she was phenomenal in G.I. Jane. A lot of people hate that movie for some reason. Uh, probably because it's a feminist day. <laughs> no, we can't have that. <laughs> Um, but I, I think this is the best performance she's ever given. Um, I think it's the deepest role she's ever been gifted. So I think that speaks to it. My favorite scene was, and you see it in the trailer where she's like smearing the makeup across her face. Yeah, That whole sequence of her fighting because she has lost her sense of self due to the, so in the movie they have to switch, right? They can't both be conscious at the same time. But so while Sue is thriving, Demi's character is just losing her sense of self like the whole time. And I thought that whole sequence of her trying to get ready for that date and just, Yeah, you know, she was like, that, like doing all of this and then like wiping the makeup off and redoing it. That was such a powerful scene. I really enjoyed like if the film had been more like that yeah, overall, I right. think it would have worked better for me. That was a am amongst all the madness going on in that movie from beginning to end. That was a heartbreaking scene. And I think the movie, like you said, kind of it found its soul there. Uh, at least the soul of Elizabeth, Demi Moore's character. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's a beautiful moment. I hope that the Academy, who has lost their nerve years ago, uh, has the guts to at least nominate her for this. I, I, I think she deserves it. I think she's wonderful. Um, Quali, uh, Andy McDowell's daughter, by the way, did she take mom to see this at the premiere? <laughs> I don't that think I beautiful. would want to take mom. Anything that would be to see strange. This. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Mom, set this one out. Uh, <laughs> I I I like her as an actress, and she, I like the fact that she is challenging herself as an actress. If if you look at her last six seven movies, um, she did a lot here, but I wouldn't say her performance stands out until the battle for dominance begins. Um, and I guess maybe her performance didn't stand out because I couldn't see it because the camera was swooping up and down her body. Um, um, it's funny writing my review and then speaking with you about it. I, I said when we came out, when we were talking in the theater that this will make my top 10. Maybe I say maybe now because I don't like things in my top 10 of the year that of the year, by the way, not of all time. Right. <laughs> um, uh, I don't like movies on my list that have problems. I, I put you as a best of because, yeah, you were great. And there was this and there was that. But as we speak and as I wrote my review and think about it more, there are a lot of, of issues. And the biggest issue is what we spoke about. And I'm not knocking the movie. It's a great film. I just think, I mean, I'm repeating myself again, but she went too far. Um, we get it. We get it. We get it. Oh, we have another hour. Oh, I'm still, I got gotcha. you. Okay. But do you um, really, do you really get it? <laughs> right. Or do you need another like butt I mean, shot to really yeah, understand? Yeah, another, yeah. And um <laughs> And by the way, and I know it's it's a movie and, and it's kind of a dark, twisted fairy tale version of what it's doing. But I uh, yeah, I you wouldn't see that on television. <laughs> Not on like the and I feel like that was a show like on regular cable, right? Or like, yeah, it was the, it was the on, local stations, right? Like four, five, seven and nine. Yeah, I'm like, who's watching that Quaid in the middle was, of the day? <laughs> Quaid was screaming about the network and. Yeah, uh, I just assume, and then the affiliates and yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want anybody to get that I'm not digging this anymore. <laughs> but it that's a big issue when you're when what you're preaching against, um, you teeter into becoming with your visual style. My other issues with it, aside from all that, and I didn't actually even think about it until I started to write 
um, write down some thoughts ahead of doing this with you. And I was like, she was literally a health conscious person. I'm a health conscious person. I don't look like Demi Moore, but I'm a health conscious person. There is no way I would just inject myself with some random substance when you don't know exactly what it's going to do. Like she, the fact that she didn't even take a breath to just Yeah. think this through. And I'm just as a woman and all the women I know, including ones that are older than me, we think things through before we do stuff like that. And she just immediately was like, there was like no, there was just no pause. It was like, oh, I got kicked out. Oh, I'm upset. All right, I'm going to duplicate myself. Yeah. And I'm going to go into this shady alley under this shady door that doesn't Right. open all the way in this gross place. and inject what's in this thing waiting for me with my name on it. I'm glad you brought that up. That was another flaw. Oh my gosh, the flaws are hit me in the face. That was another flaw that we didn't talk about that night. There was not enough. I mean, in the time you spend swooping and uh, swirling around Quali's body, you could have taken 10, 15 of those minutes to lead Demi Moore's character Elizabeth up to taking the goo I completely agree with you it was too fast you're right oh how dare they oh what am I gonna do exactly I, I again I think it would have given more depth to her character and her character is really the only one that got any type of arc anyway in that film but I think it just would have it would have benefited the entire storyline to make I agree it more believable I agree. and yes less less of the objectification and more of the actual internal of her actually fighting her feelings about everything I agree. so Well, uh, it's funny as I'm listening to us, we agree on almost everything and we completely disagree on the quote unquote thumbs up, thumbs down of the film, you know, um, That's an it's it's interesting, and that's what I love about uh, uh, talking movies with people who appreciate them. It, it's uh, there's no need to you know you see a lot of it online. What you're crazy? You Yeah. you know How dare okay. you? Yeah. Yeah, right. You don't even like horror then. <laughs> uh, oh, you calling me a sexist? You're no good. It, but, uh, no, a discourse is important, and uh, and this film will be talked about. and debated for a long time i i think horror fans will be 50 50 on it because it's some people oh yeah here it's gory let's go Mm -hmm. what's all this other stuff and uh like we've been talking about i think that the message of the movie will speak to a lot of women and uh, should speak to all women frankly but we'll divide them on how it's told um Uh, I don't know. I like a movie like this and I'm not, I'm not saying I like it just because this is going to divide audiences. And I mean, it's going to divide right down the middle. Oh, it's a love or hate. There is no middle ground. Couples are going to argue on their drive home, you know, <laughs> somebody's sleeping on the couch and it's probably the husband. Um, but uh, I, th I, I think it's a fascinating film. Um, I I'm carried along by, The cinematography, the very, uh, I like the, I, I hate terms like this, but the Kubrickian way she shot it, the long, the, especially the red hallway that Dennis Quaid comes waddling down right up to the camera. That's a very Kubrickian, shining-esque, you know, Barry Lyndon, Clockwork Orange hallway. Um, another, another divisive movie, A Clockwork Orange. Um, but, uh, I love the way it's shot. I think Demi Moore is, is really gives a, a fascinating performance. I love the message. It's a message that needs to be out there. However the heck you're going to put it out there. I, as a horror fan, I love the horror aspect of it. I love the body horror. I think this is body horror that will make, I think I said this to you, make Cronenberg say, Hey, pull back a little. Yeah, Yeah, <laughs> you just say that. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't mind that. You know, I'm not uh, blood doesn't do it. I've I hate to be this guy, but I've seen it all. And, you know, Yeah, like none of that, none of that faces me either. 
But it is yeah. disturbing. It's disturbing not because of the horror. It's disturbing because of watching Elizabeth Demi Moore's character put herself through what she puts herself through and continues to do and the ramifications of it. And the thing that hits hardest is the reason why. And that's the point of the movie. You know, the, the objectification, the aging out, the how you spoke of it earlier, how when you guys hit 45 to 50, we're done. We're done in Hollywood. You know, you can play a mom on a sitcom, but we're done here, you know. <laughs> and and what is beauty? And it's objective, but love yourself. I mean, there's so many things in this film that are important and do break through, I believe. Do break through occasionally. Um for some, it takes a little, little, <laughs> little patience, a little patience. Uh, but I think it's a, I found it a fascinating film, a fascinatingly flawed film. Okay. If I can iterate. I don't okay. know. Yeah. And that's, think, and that's, that's why I had you, had you give your opinion because I didn't think the message got through at all because of all the other crap that was going on. But like we we agree, Demi Moore is fabulous. Yeah. Cinematography, other than that stuff, is great. The sound work, sound design is just top tier. And honestly, the last twenty minutes, I don't know if it was meant to be like the end of Saw type scary body horror, but we were all laughing. All yeah. of us were oh, yeah. laughing, and I don't know if it's because it was just to me, it was just it got more absurd as it went on, and it was mm -hmm. like she was going for. Let's do everything that's ever been done in like classic body horror right now. I Even if it's that. too much, we're just going to do, do it all. And I was just like, what is happening? Like, what? Like, I think I was laughing because I was just like, why? why I, I was laughing still the same going on? Too, and <laughs> laughing at our fellow critic who was just going nuts. I oh, love yeah. It. I love it. <laughs> Um, I, I, I imagine the director and her FX supervisors, you know, talking and all right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we ripped open her back and something came out, but wait, <laughs> how about <There's> this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I won't reveal what happens at the ending, but did, have you ever seen a movie called society from 1986, seven? No. It's a horror film. It's a cult horror film. It's, very much i can't explain why because that'll spoil but it's very much a society ending um there's okay. a party that ends like this movie a got it party of okay. the posh and it's giving kind of the same message mm. uh in certain ways okay but uh yeah um i thought the ending was fascinating it went on a bit too long um the book ending sequence with the hollywood star that's all i'll say not sure that worked, but I get it. Again, I get it. <laughs> but I think that uh, was I, another point where I was like, uh, okay. Yeah. This is it's never a good sign when you're and I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you or <laughs> other people, when you're saying, Okay, I'm ready for this to wrap up now. You know, that's never a good sign, but but uh we agree, but differently. A fascinating film. Her other film, Revenge, from 2017, is a more concise film, if you will. Um, but this one, you did, you did, you didn't, you didn't think the message came through at all. And and like I said, especially with what I said about the uh, defiling yourself to please others and the ramifications. You know, you got to look hard in the middle of all this stuff. And I wasn't looking for it. I just it it, it got to me. And uh, I can no. I can see where where you believe it came through. And honestly, kind of like, you know, you said talk, being able to talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. I can better understand it because I just was not trying to wade through all that <laughs> yeah. to find can, the yeah. message. <laughs> and that's understandable, too. Um, this is the type of movie where. You know, if you if you did actively hate it and I loved it, I couldn't say, no, wait, you can't be saying you hate it because of the blah, blah, blah. No, if somebody hates this, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Whether you're male and especially a female, if you don't, well, if this movie doesn't play to you, 
I completely get it. And for those who love it, I get that too. But this isn't the type of film that you can explain away or really turn somebody on their final opinion. But, uh, and that's another thing I love about it. You know, I love the divide down the middle movies. I, I like it. I'm not always looking for something controversial, but this is certainly going to be one of the most talked about films of the decade, I believe. That's strong words, especially out of like all the other stuff we've gotten so far this year. Well, I just mean most talked about. It's not going to make okay, a, okay. <laughs> This isn't going to make a dime. And, and look, I wish that were different. I'm not trying to damn it. I just, it's not going to make any money. It's going to have a decent opening weekend. And then don't you go see that. Wait for streaming. You're not going to believe what happens. Yeah, so. that seemed to be a lot of consensus I saw online. People... I think even I saw somebody comment on yours and you were like, I don't know. I think you might want to wait because they weren't sure yeah. if they would like the body horror aspect of it. And I do know that at Kane's where it premiered, like, yes, a lot of people really liked it and other people walked out because it was just too much. So yeah, it's definitely gonna, there is, there is no middle ground. You either love uh, it or you hate it. I agree. And uh, I, I, pretty much love it <laughs> with with reservations yes yes right. well thank you for joining me today and honestly if you all want to follow somebody who knows way more about movies than most other people i know that would be anthony he likes to not brag but i mean honestly he drops little <laughs> he drops... go on go on <laughs> He's constantly like, oh, you know, this film, this obscure film from the 1950s. <laughs> so I'm just like, cool. <laughs> if you have me back, I'm going to wear an ascot and a pipe. You have to with the top hat. It has to have a top hat, too. Can I have a spectacle? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having me. This was great. It was a great chat. We could talk for hours on this thing. I could. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I never want to talk about this movie again. That's what you said an hour into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it took an hour to get to that point for me. Oh, I yeah. think it was far, far sooner than that. <laughs> and I was like, is this over? <laughs> so, but yeah. Well, thanks again for having me. This has been great. I, I hope I'm asked back someday. Oh, for sure. Thank you.